if you follow me on the social media, and here I'm talking about Instagram and also Twitter, or what was previously known as Twitter, you may have seen that I was 10-15 days ago in London, and it looked like a vacation, but actually it was a secret mission. The secret mission was to finally meet up with one guy and to exchange the information. One thing I didn't know is that I will end up with a box in my hands. So the next task I had was to smuggle that box from the UK to continental Europe. And I did it. So today we are going to look at the contents of that box. And thank you Alexei for that box, it really was awesome. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Thank you once again, Alexei, for giving me this awesome device. I really wasn't expecting it and it's actually an awesome device. Unfortunately, it is currently not available or sold out if you want to buy it as a bundle. But you can still buy it as a non-bundle device, meaning just a device without the USB cable or without the USB charger. So what is local deck? Well, local deck is alternative and better alternative, if I may say so, to Elgato Stream Deck. Stream Deck is a very expensive, underperforming device from Elgato, like most of the Elgato stuff. Yes, the device is good, but the price tag is just an awful. The good thing about it is that it is working with both PCs, Mac, you can use it in laptops, and you can also customize it so that it works in most environments. Yes, there is also option to use it with Home Assistant, but it's not as straightforward as some of you would prefer. I myself am using it to control the lights, the Elgato lights I have, once again overpriced and underperforming lights, and this device really works great sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't recognize Elgato devices, and that's a pretty expensive device or whole ecosystem for people that do content. But not only that, as I said, yes, you can get it working with Home Assistant. Local Bytes Local Desk device is ESP home powered alternative to Elgato. Of course, it's not the same in functionality. Elgato does have under each of the buttons LCD screen, so you can change the icon in the app and it will be displayed under the button. With a local deck, yeah, unfortunately, you have to print the labels and insert them under the cap. But what local desk has, Elgato will never have and that is the awesome integration inside Home Assistant. When you buy a local deck, you will receive everything you need to start playing with the device. If you go for the bundle, you should also receive the charger with the cable, a very, very, very long cable that also has detachable heads, so you can replace it for whatever type of outlet you have in your own country. There is minimal assembly required, and that minimal assembly is to pull out all of the buttons, press in the faceplate and then reinstall the buttons. Each button or switch composes of three parts, the mechanical switch, the white button and the transparent cover for that button under which you can of course insert any label you want. But that's not all you get. You also get awesome documentation available online, awesome community or forums where you can ask questions and get responses, and also videos created by the founder and the CEO of the local bytes, Adam Allport. So what's the next step? The next step is to edit inside Home Assistant. If your instance of Home Assistant has Bluetooth capabilities, it doesn't necessarily need to be internal Bluetooth, you can also have Bluetooth proxies. Home Assistant should recognize it, and the improv configuration button should pop out. What that means? This means that although the devices do not know each other, Home Assistant has detected intent from device to be paired with something. And here Bluetooth Improv comes into play. You click on it to configure it, type in the SSID and password for your Wi-Fi network, press the button on the keypad, and this is usually the button located on the bottom left, and the system will exchange the credentials with the local DAC. If everything goes well, you will then see notification Home Assistant that new ESP Home device was detected and if you want to add it or not. By adding it, you are adding the device, but you still need to enable one more thing. Because we want to create service calls between Home Assistant and Local Desk or between Local Desk and Home Assistant, you need to press on Configure and tick the box next to Allow Service Calls. 
more or less this is it but actually the device is still not configured now you can go to esp home page and import the device and there you can see the yaml page but that would not be fun because of that adam also created one more thing and that is the local deck configurator what this configurator allows you is to configure each and every single button there is also online version of that same thing but i really would recommend that you install the local add-on i will be if i remember posting a link where you just click open a link and it will then automatically add the repository and also install the add-on inside home assistant and when you open the add-on you should see something like this these are all the yaml files for various devices i have but it has recognized that i have one device called recording deck if I click on it, depending on if the device was previously configured or not, it will load the configuration. There is currently a bug, I just need to click on one of the buttons and everything will be fixed. But yeah, this is how my current setup of the local desk looks. So what do you need to do here? You need to configure each one of the buttons and it's pretty simple. What you need to do is, for example, click on number 19. If you want this exposed to Home Assistant, you just leave this as is. Select an entity because now this is paired with a home assistant and that can be anything. For example, light dot, this one here, Elgato ring. Select an emoji if you want. I will select this circle because this is a ring light. And now also select size. I go for five, but you can go for something bigger if it fits on the button itself. The configuration is now done, but it is still not saved. What you would need to do is after you have configured everything and you can still configure toggle entity. This is awesome for lights because when you toggle it, it turns between on and off state. Follow state, that means that the light under the button, yes, each and every button has also LED under it, will follow the state of the light. So for example, if Elgato ring light is turned on, the button light will also be turned on. There we have follow brightness, meaning that the brightness of the button will depend on the brightness of the light that we are controlling. And also you can follow the color, so that color also changes on the local deck as it changes in the real life. So what you would need to do now is click on save. You should go back to the ESP home, find the device in the ESP home list and click on three dots and install. As with any ESP home device, you have option to go wirelessly plug into this computer, plug into computer running ESP Home Dashboard or manual download. And that's it. Well, actually, this was not it for me. While the device is great and while I was able to edit out of box, as soon as I've loaded up my configuration, I wasn't able to do anything with the device. It would constantly be booting and each time it reboots, it goes to the 5 second rainbow under each of the buttons. And it would actually get stuck. It would never finish it. So then I went to the log files, check what was going on, and I've seen that I have issues with the Wi-Fi network, and also the device was rebooting for whatever reasons. So then I started working on the YAML file. First thing I did was to disable the web server and also captive portal to reduce the RAM used by the device itself. This did help. The device was now booting up normally, but still I was having issues with the Wi-Fi network because, yeah, I decided to invest in Unify, and Unify sucks. Then I had to tackle the approach the other way. I decided to use PowerSafe mode none. This should tell the ESP board that it doesn't need to do any kind of power saving on this device because actually it's constantly connected to the socket and that it can just be alive all the time. But unfortunately this also didn't work because I was not able to compile it. The issue is that if you want to enable this functionality, to change the power save mode from light, which is the default one, to none, you also need to disable everything related to improv, because BLE functionality needs to have power save mode equal light, for whatever reason. And because of that, I disabled everything related to improv, clicked on save, clicked on install, wirelessly, and then wait a bit, around five, 10 minutes maybe, for everything to get downloaded, compiled, and then uploaded to the board itself, or the local deck itself. But that's not all that you can do with the local deck configurator. I will stop this process because I am currently running the latest firmware. No, that's not all. 
because if we go to local desk configurator, select the device that we want to control, click on anything so that icons get fixed, you can also see one additional button and that is the print button. This button is used to push all of the icons that you have defined with the description to your printer. That way you can print the labels, cut them out, insert under the transparent covers and your local deck is ready to use. And how does it work? For example, if I click the button for the ceiling lights on the local deck, the ceiling lights will turn on in Home Assistant. If I turn off the lights here, the lights will also turn off on local deck. If I go into this specific room, press on three dots, go to color palette and change the color to, for example, red, it will also change to that same color on the local deck. But that's not all. These are the lights. Of course, you can do also other things. What are some other things that I have added besides light to my local deck and what can you also add? Anything that can be toggled. So for example, I have added switchboard curtains. With a single touch of the button, I can open them and close them. I didn't play with the percentages. It's either fully open or fully closed. Then I can also, for example, control my vacuum. In this case, switchboard K10 Plus Pro, small robot that is a matter compatible. I just press the button here and it goes off vacuuming. When I press it once again, it will return back to the dock. Or I can control my bathroom vent relay, that is the Shelly relay, which is actually a switch, or any other switch, cover, vacuum, or whatever you have inside Home Assistant that allows you to use on or off state. But that's not all. For example, if you want, you can change the input bullions, and add them here so you can control the state of input booleans, run any script you want to run, anything that is actually exposed in Home Assistant as entity can be toggled with this local deck. But what are some of the bad things? As I said, unfortunately, my experience of setting it up with my setup, with my Unify network was a bit troublesome. But if you follow the steps I did, and that is to disable the improv inside the YAML configuration and also enable or add power save mode equal none, it will work perfectly and react to every command. But you do not need to use it only with Home Assistant. I've seen that somebody has created alternative firmwares for it and those ones can use MQTT. So even if you are using other systems besides Home Assistant that have MQTT capability or connection with MQTT, you can still use this device. Everything on device really looks awesome, it is very easy to set up, it is very easy to assemble and of course you do not need to use local deck configurator. If you are proficient in YAML files, you can play with the code, you can change things up, you can for example receive alerts on this device from within Home Assistant by blinking specific buttons so that you are reminded that you need to do something, then press that same button, the action pops up in Home Assistant and the light is cleared. So it's all up to you how you will further customize this device. And the options are really limitless. If you want to know more about Author, this device or any other devices that Local Bytes is carrying in their shop, you can go to the Local Bytes blog and read everything there. And as I mentioned, the author or creator or founder of Local Bytes has also created a couple of videos, not just explaining how to set up, but also his process of creating and what were all of the hurdles. So I really do recommend that you go and check out this device. And of course, if you like it, don't forget to buy it. All the links to everything will be down in the video description. And once again, I must say thanks to Alexei because I really was surprised. I didn't have any idea what was inside the box. So I really, really, really was surprised and I'm loving this device. But I also know that I have a couple of other devices in my pocket or my hand, sorry, that I will be sending back to Alexei. I really do hope that you did enjoy this video. And if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It really means a lot to me, but it also helps with the YouTube channel. If you have any kind of a comment or a question, if you are already using local deck or any other local bytes devices, I really would like to hear your opinion. What do you think about them? Also, if you have issues with them, I may not be able to solve those issues, but I really would like to hear what are your issues, what are your concerns, and also, especially if you have stopped using these devices, what was the bottleneck for you that you just decided to quit on it? This is maybe something that I'm most interested in. 
And before I end up the video, I also would like to say thanks to all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, shared, commented or liked my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or you can go to my merchandise store and I really should update the content there and get something there. Last but not least, you can always send me super thanks and as always, I will be super thankful for that. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.